Good morning. This is the uh, 19th lecture in the series of AECS. So we are in the module number two. Initially, we have covered uh, the module number two, first topic that is sensors and actuators. And after that, we have covered uh, the next topic that is uh, module number two, topic two, that is different modes of transmission. So we have seen there auto transmission, manual transmission. We have seen torque converter, impeller, and all those configurations. After that, uh, these are the ending topics. So we are in the uh, last part, that is the second half of uh, module two. Uh, the main topics are chassis, <coughs> steering control, hydraulic braking, power braking, and traction control. So in this lecture, we would mainly try to uh, cover uh, what is actually meant by chassis. Okay. And uh, then we'll see different types of steering control. So in the steering control, first we'll see the basic principle, <clears throat> then fundamentals of electronic control uh, power steering. And in uh, power steering, we'll be finding there are three types. One is hydraulic, one is electrohydraulic, and one is electric. So we'll start with chassis because uh, whatever uh, topics that will come after this, uh, that is in the next session of lecture, that is electronically controlled hydraulic brake, electric power brake, uh, introduction to traction control and electric management of chassis and chassis control. So all this together, that is uh, different types of steering, uh, then uh, power uh, braking, then uh, hydraulic braking. So all this thing together uh, are a part of the chassis. Okay, so we'll see the uh, chassis and uh, the steering control part today. This is mainly uh, what we see of a car. That is, we are controlling the car by the means of a uh, steering uh, and uh, there are wheels and we sit on the chair. So this is our minimum connection with the car that is shown in this uh, picture, but uh, which is not shown, uh, that is the main chassis and the body of the car engine. We have already studied engine in detail. So the things that we cannot see uh, from outside of a car, okay, we will have to study about that. So main part is chassis and different other parts, brake, gear, and other things. So we'll be seeing that today. So what is a vehicle chassis? So chassis is a, a collective term for all the parts of the vehicle except the bodywork. Bodywork means whatever roof, whatever side metallic or uh, fiber body kind of a thing are there, except that whatever thing we are finding in a vehicle is called as a chassis, it's part of a chassis. So major part of the vehicle is collectively called chassis. So it includes uh, wheels, steering, uh, at least part of the steering, whichever uh, are there. So brakes, suspension, axle, engine, etc. So all these are mainly mechanical part, but a lot of sensors are put in that and they are sensed and controlled by means of electronic, electrical or hydraulic uh, power transmissions. So you should understand the chassis of the car better because knowing about our vehicle is incredibly, uh, incredibly important when it comes to caring for the uh, and maintaining for it properly. So chassis is the canvas of the car and is one of the most important component of the vehicle without which the car would have no structure. Okay. So without uh, the wheels, steering, brake, suspension, axle, engine, uh, the car cannot exist. So car does not mean the outside uh, metal body that we see. Okay. Actual things is chassis which we cannot see. Okay. But we have to take care of that. We should know how it functions. So chassis actually is the canvas in which the final construction of the vehicle is placed upon. Chassis are usually made of carbon steel. More recently as a way to create more inexpensive vehicles, that is cheaper kind of vehicles, some chassis have been made with aluminium. So you can see here, so this is a chassis, the lower part is shown here in this image. And there's another image which is uh, uh, between the main body and the tire, whatever is the uh, uh, connection, all those things are shown. So this is a shock absorber kind of a thing which is shown. Okay. So these are all part of chassis. Chassis part maintenance. So car chassis parts needs constant lubrication. At least once in every six months, we should lubricate it. If suspension squeaks or creaks, that means some <clears throat> screeching, kind of, screeching kind of sound is produced. There's a sign that there isn't enough lubrication on chassis. So this issue is to be addressed immediately. We should always keep the chassis clean. Since it is in the underside of the vehicle, it is common that the chassis to become caked with dirt and mud, but we should always keep it clean. Keeping the chassis clean improves the vehicle's lifespan and its driving performance as well. 
This can easily be done at the home by means of a sponge, water, and if required, a degreaser for any oil that may get deposited on the chassis. The painted areas are to be kept dry to keep them from rusting. Painted areas generally uh, rust less. So depending on the vehicle, the front end assembly may be uh, include tie rod ends, idler arms, pitman arms, rack pinion, ball joints and shocks and struts. All these places should be maintained properly. So you can see there here this image. So this is the body of the car and below that this red part <clears throat> this is actually the chassis and this is actually the main power transmission thing axle we can find here here we can find the engine so here is the tire assembly so here is the uh, connection between the steering and the uh, rack and pinion kind of uh, steering systems and all these things so below part this bottom part is actually the car chassis and above this is uh, what we look actually but this is not actually the chassis this is the car body so this is again uh, the chassis part and here we can see there's a left hand drive and here this is the steering and in front there are engine and all the power transmission system, all the uh, tires and all those things we can see here. So after the chassis, more uh, discussion on the chassis will happen in future towards the end of this uh, lecture number, next lecture, okay, we'll be finding what is chassis control. Uh, let us come to uh, steering control. We have already seen the video of it, but today let us have some basic understanding introduction of this. So steering assembly consists of steering gearbox rack and pinion assembly. So rack and pinion is the assembly on which the uh, from the steering. So there comes an arm. So that arm actually rotates on rack and pinion. So this is a very basic type of uh, steering we are talking about, not power steering. Okay, so this is connected mechanically to the steering wheel by a steering shaft, which is typically does not uh, need replacement. So the steering shaft generally does not require replacement. Steering gear is then connected to the steering knuckles with the tie rod ends. We will see all this in the video again. Steering components optimize the vehicle handling through a light and high precision design and improved directional stability and accuracy, even on tough bumpy roads. So steering design is modified depending on individual climatic condition and different types of circumstances. The steering system enables the driver to control and continuously adjust the steered path of the vehicle. So the path on which uh, the vehicle will move would move. Depending on that, a proper kind of steering is to be designed. So we have seen in case of Formula One car, we can take out the steering from there. So in that case, uh, steering clearance is very small, so it is almost attached to the body and moves there. But otherwise, in four wheelers and all, we can find that steering is kind of it comes towards us, so there is axis is quite long. Okay, so depending on the uh, individual climatic condition and circumstances, actually the steering changes. <clears throat> so it provides a positive response to whatever direction the driver wants to maneuver uh, his vehicle. So that is the type of steering we have to use. The function of a steering system is to convert the rotary movement of the steering wheel in driver's hand into the angular turn of the front wheels on the road. Generally what happens is uh, the, the back two uh, tires, they are actually given power. They are actually pushing always the car in front if we are not using a back gear. So the back uh, tires actually is pushing the car towards the uh, forward direction. And front two tires, they are actually giving the direction. So front two tires actually are controlled by the uh, steering. And uh, the, by steering, actually we are maneuvering the car and we are giving the car a direction. So additionally, the steering system should provide mechanical advantage over front wheel steering knuckles, offering driver an easy turning of front wheel with minimum effort in any desired direction. So here we are going to see, uh, here we are going to see the uh, steering kind of a thing and exactly uh, the initial part we have seen. So exactly how, what is the construction of the steering that we are going to see here. And first we will start with manual steering, then we will go for power steering. So let us see uh, how exactly is the construction of manual steering. When you learn to drive, the rolling. One major thing to be noted here is that for such a perfect turn, the perpendicular lines from the front wheels should meet the real wheel axis at a common point. 
This condition is the principle of steering. If you observe carefully, you will note that the angles turned by the left and right wheels are not the same. This means that for perfect steering, the left and right wheels should turn at different angles. The steering mechanism is used to carry out this purpose. The most commonly used steering mechanism. So now we'll see the mechanical uh, rack and pinion type of steering and its construction. Okay. So here it is shown. Uh, what are the inside part of it? We will see. Mechanical steering first. Mechanism type. in modern vehicles is the rack and pinion type. Let's see how this mechanism manages to steer the vehicle. A rack is at the center of this mechanism. This rack is constrained so that it can only move in a straight line. The pinion, which comes from the steering, can make this rack move. A part called a steering arm is attached to both of the wheels. This part is constrained so it only has a rotational motion along the axis shown. The steering arm is connected to the car frame via a roller bearing. This makes sure that it can only turn. A tie rod connects the steering arm to the rack. The tie rod can have both translational and rotational motion. Now, just observe what happens to the wheels when the rack moves. You can see that the left and right wheels are turning at different angles. If you track the meeting point of the left and right wheels, you can see the meeting point always lies on the rear wheel line. Thus, the rack and pinion mechanism perfectly satisfies the conditions needed for steering. Due to this, the vehicle makes a turn without slipping. The steering we have discussed so far was the manual type. Nowadays, electric motor assisted power steering is widely used on most cars. Elect so this was all about uh, rack and pinion type uh, mechanical steering. <clears throat> we have seen different parts of the mechanical steering. So whenever we are uh, going to see the power steering thing, so we will be seeing the remaining part of this video. So what is the steering control system? What is the basic principle? So turning is the basic function of the vehicle controlled by the steering system. So turning and control should be in our hand. Turning changes the direction of the vehicle by turning tires through steering wheel operation. Power steering is a device providing comfortable operation to the driver, though steering will operate. So it's a kind of an assisted operation. Uh, that is the power steering. So here in steering control, <clears throat> we can see uh, the basic principle of the steering. So here you can find uh, this part is something different. What is that? We will see. So steering command is passed to the wheel through a system called as pivot joints. So pivot joints are designed to allow the wheels to move up and down with the suspension without changing the steering angle. So they also ensure that when the inner front wheel, so which has to travel around a tighter curve than the outer one, so whichever direction we are uh, uh, moving the car, so that side uh, wheel has to turn more okay, than the other side. So if you are turning left, the left wheel will turn more and the right wheel will turn less. Okay. So they also ensure that when the inner front wheel uh, suppose we are moving in the left side, then left wheel becomes inner wheel. So we just to travel around a tighter curve than the outer one. So if we are taking a leftward turn, in that case, right wheel is the outer wheel and left wheel is the inner wheel. So in that case, the inner wheel, that is the left wheel, will become more sharply angled. The joints must be adjusted very precisely and even a little looseness in them makes the steering dangerously sloppy and inaccurate. So there are two steering systems in common type use that is in uh, mechanical type. One is rack and pinion. Just now we have seen one. Another is the steering box type. Okay. But for mechanical, if we are asked, we have to explain uh, rack and pinion type only in the exam. So basic steering control requirements. What are the basic steering control requirements for mechanical? So on passengers cars, the driver must select the steering wheel angle to keep the deviation from the desired path low. That means uh, with little movement of the steering, we should be able to uh, take the proper turn. Okay, So less movement of steering should produce a higher uh, deviation or higher angle. So that is the main requirement. 
So there is no definite functional relationship between the turning angle of the steering wheel made by the driver and the change in the driving direction. Okay, because the correlation of the following is not linear. So exactly one is to one correspondence is not there between turn of the uh, steering wheel and how much rotation it can take. Okay, so it is a nonlinear relationship. So the nonlinearity in relation arises from there are four conditions. So what where is the nonlinearity? Amount of rotation we are rotating the steering, and amount of angle the tires are making. So this relationship is nonlinear. And why nonlinear? Because number of turns on the steering wheel. Okay. So this is uh, there are many turns and all, and uh, exactly for this much turn of the steering wheel, uh, the wheels will move this much. This relationship is not perfectly uh, linear. So first is number of turns in steering wheel. There are many. Number two is alteration of steer angle at the front wheels. Number three is development of lateral tire forces. So sometimes we are uh, taking turn with high force. Sometimes we are taking turn at low force, low speed. So in all these different times, amount of uh, rotation of the steering wheel for a certain angle creation at tire will be different. Alteration of driving directions. Okay, so suddenly from one direction we are changing the direction we are going in the other. So these are the reasons that is turn of steering wheel, alteration of steer angle at the front wheel, development of lateral tire forces, alteration of driving directions. So for all these reasons, there is no one is to one corresponding between uh, how much angle we are uh, going to rotate the steering and how much angle will the tire or wheel make. Okay, so there is no one is to one correspondence. So this nonlinearity results from elastic compliance in the components of the chassis. Okay. To move a vehicle, the driver must continually adjust the relationship between the turning and steering wheel and the alteration in the direction of travel. So continuously we are maneuver maneuvering the steering wheel to keep our car on road. To do so, the driver will monitor huge information going far beyond the visual perspective faculty. So not every time what we see, but what we feel in the car while we are driving. Okay, so our visual as well as our perceptive information. Together we have to put to keep the car on proper track or to manage uh, it to rotate in a proper angle. So these factors would include, for example, the role inclination of the body, the feeling of being held steady in the seat, that is a transverse acceleration, self-centering torque the driver will feel through the steering wheel. So most of the time it is an anticipatory kind of a thing. Okay, so we have to drive the car most most of the time with anticipation. So the most important information the driver receives comes via the steering moment or torque, which provides him with feedback on the forces acting on the wheels. So that's why whenever I'm habituated with some car, I know how much to steer the steering so that the car will take this much degree of turn. Okay, a new person new with the car might not have a perfect uh, that adjustment angle and all. Okay, so more we are uh, practicing with the same car, uh, our turn and other thing will be uh, very perfect related to the steering wheel. So it's a matter of practice and uh, the perception that we develop. So this is mainly for uh, our study actually. So rack and pinion type of steering, there is a very basic mechanical type of steering. What are the advantages? So it is simple construction, economic and uncomplicated manufacture, easy to operate due to good degree of efficiency. Contact between the steering rack and pinion is free of play and even internal damping is maintained. Tie rod can be joined directly to the steering rack and many such advantages are mentioned in case of rack and pinion steering type uh, arrangement. Okay, so prepare this. At the same time, there are disadvantages also. So what are the disadvantages? Greater sensitivity to impacts. So sometimes the sensitivity, sensitivity becomes so huge that little change in uh, the movement of the steering or little angular position change in the steering will uh, rotate the car for a very uh, longer degree. So that should not happen. Okay. So greater sensitivity to impacts. Greater stress in the case of tie rod angular forces. So, so we kind of feel of a jamming effect. Okay, because the tie rod is having greater stress. So disturbance of the steering wheel is easier to feel. So if there is any kind of uh, front wheel uh, misalignment or disturbance directly, it comes and affects the uh, steering movability. 
tie rod length sometimes too short where it is connected at the ends of the rack okay so sometimes tie rods are very small size of the steering angle depends on steering rack travel so all these are different kinds of maneuvering kind of uh, uh, disadvantages that we are finding in case of the rack and pinion type steering so four or five points each advantage and disadvantage you can prepare for the final exam so all those disadvantages that we are having in case of rack and pinion mechanical kind of steering can be overcome by using a power steering okay. so power steering means a little uh, it's called a assisted steering so there is uh, some power which is coming uh, the source can be hydraulic source can be some motor electric and they are actually assisting the rotation of the steering wheel so not every power we have to put but some power is generated from inside the vehicle and that is actually assisting the steering part so let us see this video for a long video about power steering and its hydraulic kind of power steering how does it act listen to it carefully increased applications of front wheel drive and wider low profile tires places additional loads on front wheels steering then demands more effort from the driver power steering helps to reduce the additional effort needed it's of most benefit during so please note the advantages of power steering that this video is telling so the advantages of power steering will be asked in the exam please prepare it from this video write it down front wheels steering then demands more effort from the driver power steering helps to reduce the additional effort needed it's of most benefit during slow cornering and when parking assistance is provided as soon as the steering wheel is rotated in either direction and it's designed so that even if system failure occurs the vehicle can still be steered an engine driven hydraulic pump delivers hydraulic fluid to the power unit at the steering box or rack and pinion through connecting hoses and pipes the fluid reservoir can be mounted on the pump or it can be separate with the engine running fluid flows continuously from the power steering pump to the steering gear and back to the pump with the steering wheel in the neutral position little pressure is needed to maintain fluid flow and little engine power is needed to operate the system So this is about the uh, power steering video. More videos we will be seeing shortly. So what is actually power steering? So some formal introduction about that. So they have become more widely used in the last few years due to number one increasing front axle loads of the vehicle. Okay, so the front axle uh, loads are increasing, hence driving becomes a little difficult. Power engine actually power steering, not engine power steering actually makes it a little easy. And continuously over the last few years, the ask for vehicle with more agile steering properties are increasing. So we are asking for higher sensitivity steering. So hence, direct transmission steering system. So hence, uh, direct transmission steering system with the exception of some members of the subcompact class, power steering systems are optionally or automatically included as one of the standard features. So now even the car uh, manufacturers, they don't ask, they put power steering in almost all the vehicles. Manual steering system are used as a basis for the power steering. So manual steering is there, but uh, the rotation assistance comes from either hydraulic or electrical motors so manual steering system are used as a basis for power steering system with the advantage that the mechanical connection between the steering wheel and the wheel actual wheel and all the components continues to be maintained with or without the help of the auxiliary power so here is coming the main thing what is the advantage of power steering it is saying that the steering wheel torque applied by the driver is detected by a measurement system located in the region of the input shaft of the steering gear or in its steering tube and additional forces or moments are introduced into the system so how is the additional forces introduced it can be hydraulically it can be electrically it can be electro hydraulically there are three types we will see all the three types of power steering and their construction here in today's lecture 
This follows a characteristic curve, which is also called as valve characteristics or group of curves depending on the height of the steering wheel torque. If another quantity like driving speed is entered as a signal, the steering boost is hereby reduced with the aim of achieving better road contact at higher speeds. So there are two things that Austin is giving. Number one, with little maneuver, with little change in the steering position, we can rotate the car for a higher degree. That is first thing, that is with ease. Number two thing is <clears throat> the steering boost is thereby reduced with the aim that achieving better road contact at higher speed. So easy maneuvering and better contact, that is better uh, control, even at higher speed. So these two are the main positive characteristics of power steering. So we are seeing that uh, there is a hydraulic power steering. So there are mainly three types of power steering we will see. So still the very uh, widely used steering is the hydraulic power steering. Uh, just in the previous video, I have shown you the hydraulic power steering. So the method of uh, using oil under pressure to boost the servo is sophisticated and advantageous in terms of cost, space and weight. So as it was told to you previously that hydraulic transmission is the most powerful transmission. So uh, if we can use the hydraulic fluid for power transmission, that means with little of uh, pressure, we can get higher uh, displacement. So sensitivity to the movements caused by the road surface and hence the effect of torsional impacts and torsional vibrations passing into the steering wheel is also noticeably reduced. Okay, So particularly with the rack and pinion steering. So all the uh, torsional impact, all the torsional vibrations passing into the steering wheel is also noticeably reduced. That means if the car is vibrating, at that time our hand should not vibrate, at that time the steering should not uh, get the impact, reverse impact. Okay. So this is much more of a stable system, which is with lesser torsional vibration with lesser torsional impact. Okay, particularly which was the case with rack and pinion steering. So if the vibration is there in the front wheel in the car, uh, the steering also would be <coughs> heavily vibrated. That is not the case here. So this can be attributed to the hydraulic self damping. <coughs> so whenever damping is there, which is uh, heavily produced by the uh, hydraulic system, whenever damping is there, vibration is less. So less vibration, uh, can be attributed by uh, the hydraulic self damping. It might also be the reason why it is possible to dispense with an additional steering shock absorber in most vehicles with hydraulic rack and pinion steering. So uh, extra shock absorber is not required if we are using hydraulic power steering. So that's why it is said that it can be dispensed. Okay. Whereas it is required for the same vehicle with manual steering. So a very important point that it might also be the reason that is as this hydraulic with higher damping, they reduce the torsional vibration, they reduce the torsional impact. In that case, we can dispense, that means we can remove uh, one extra additional steering shock absorber, okay, which was uh, required in case of manual steering. Hydraulic power steering system of the Opel Vectra, <clears throat> which came into market in 1997, is shown in the right side. The individual components are, as you can see here, so number one is vane pump or driven by V beds. So this is the first thing. Second one is high pressure a line. Okay, line means whichever is the wire, which is or tubes which are carrying the uh, viscous hydraulic liquid. Number three is the cooling circuit, which is there here at the front. Number four is the return line. Okay, so it is going to the main pump number uh, from steering valve to the pump. Number five is the steering gear uh, with external drive. So there's the steering gear like we had seen in case of rack and pinion okay, attached to the auxiliary frame. Number six is steering valve. So number six is here. So there's a steering valve. So here is a steering control from here. The rotation is coming and giving the power to the other uh, fifth part that is the steering gear through the steering valve. Seven and eight, so these two other things, which are pressure lines to the working cylinder. So these are actually carrying the viscous fluid, hydraulic fluid. Number nine, the steering column. Okay, this is also transferring our command to the steering valves and all. Number 10 is steering wheel with integrated airbag. So only this part, this part we can see and the integrated airbag we can see, but all the remaining part, one to nine, they are not visible. So we can only visualize number 10 part. How does the power, uh, hydraulic power steering function? Please see this video. Uh, 
electronic power steering is one of the latest vehicle advances replacing the hydraulic pump assist system. However, a strong understanding of these older systems is still required. Hi, I'm Clint. Welcome to Automate. Early steering systems relied on the reduction gear ratios within the steering box or rack to reduce steering input required by the driver. So it was not only rack and pinion, it was worm and steer also, worm and uh, sector, that is the steering type. Okay, so both were mechanical type. So this is a worm type, okay, worm and sector. So this is a sector, this is a worm, okay, and this is a rack and pinion type. Okay, they were the mechanical uh, type of thing. Or the driver. These systems were improved with the addition of hydraulic assistance to the steering rack or box. Now the same systems are there, but power transmission is done not by human mechanical force. It is done by hydraulic pump. Who are getting input from the human force, but human force is reduced in case of hydraulic power steering. Early steering systems relied on the reduction gear ratios within the steering box or rack to reduce steering input required by the driver. These systems were improved with the addition of hydraulic assistance to the steering rack or box. The hydraulic pump creates flow within the steering system and provides the force required to operate the steering gear. The power steering pump is generally belt driven by the engine crankshaft. Lecture, sir. This means whenever I'll the engine is running, yes. hydraulic flow is maintained. The most common hydraulic pump is the centrifugal vane type. Rotation of the pump shaft spins the rotor and retractable vanes inside an oval shaped camera. Hydraulic fluid is drawn into the pump housing from the reservoir due to the low pressure created by the rotating vanes. The fluid is pushed by the vanes to the outlet side of the pump housing where it passes through a flow and pressure relief valve before entering the supply hoses. Like what you see? To gain access to the most advanced automotive technical training available, visit our website and be the best technician you can be. So what we can find here is in case of hydraulic uh, power steering that there is a, a very heavy viscous fluid flow which is coming uh, from the uh, storage that is there is a fluid valve or there is a fluid storage uh, from there the fluid is coming and rotating the wheel that is the steering wheel which is a kind of assistance we are getting so not huge pressure is coming on our hand because that hydraulic fluid itself is used for rotating the steering and uh, this actually is called as an assisted steering uh, there's a second type actually the second type is called as electro hydraulic power steering we will see a video for this also so this power steering pump driven by the engine of the vehicle via v belts previous case also we have seen v belts but in this case this v belts is replaced by a electrically operated pump figure shows the arrangement in an opel astra 1997 model the electrically operated power pack supplies a hydraulic torsion bar controlled steering valve with oil. The pump is electronically controlled when servo boost is not required, the oil supply is <coughs> reduced. The supply of engine by electricity cable allows greater flexibility with regard to the position of the power pack. It is located immediately close to the steering gear and it is compared to purely hydraulic system, the lines are considerably shorter and there is no cooling circuit. The steering gear, power pack and lines are installed as a ready assembled uh, and tested unit. So there are few uh, very important differences which are mentioned here, difference between hydraulic and electro hydraulic power steering. So first thing is uh, there is no V belt in case of electro hydraulic power steering as was found in case of hydraulic power steering. Instead of V belt, there is an electrically operated pump. Okay. The lines of uh, the uh, electronic uh, electro hydraulic power steering lines means the uh, tubes or pipes through which the fluid flows they are a lot less they are a lot shorter in case of uh, electro hydraulic power steering uh, the supply of energy by electricity cable allows greater flexibility with regard to the position of the power pack and it is located immediately close to the steering gear 
okay a very important difference compared to the purely hydraulic system the lines are comparatively shorter and therefore uh, there is no cooling system required in case of hydraulic power steering so three very big difference one is the v, v belts are not there second is uh, lines are comparatively shorter in case of power steering and third thing is there is no cooling system in the uh, electro hydraulic power steering and the steering gear power rack and lines are installed as a ready assembled and tested unit so the uh, mainly four parts we are seeing here in this diagram okay first part which is here this is a electrically operated power steering pump with integrated reserve tank okay so there is a pump actually and this pump is actually pumping the fluid inside the steering which is connected here somewhere okay. number two pump steering valve hydraulic lines so these are the uh, hydraulic lines tubes actually which are carrying the pumped and pressed compressed uh, hydraulic fluid uh, inside the steering okay number three that is here this part so this is the rack and pinion steering gear with external drive attached to the auxiliary frame number four is the steering valve that is this part okay and steering is somewhere here the next slide we can see the same